much needed at this time. The topic is how you can rise like a phoenix in a magical way. Looking at the pandemic, it is just an illusion. I want to call it as an illusion because it is short-lived and it is, uh, when you reflect on it, unbelievable. It has created unbelievable a disaster. One is a psychological disaster and everybody is afraid, you know. Within the two months, something has made us to fear, to fear to go to anywhere because the fear of infection, and that is an illusion, okay? And how are you going to rise up from this illusion? You know, uh, it is by understanding the illusion itself. Everything is an illusion from a spiritual point of view. Even the body is an illusion, the mind is an illusion, the world is an illusion, and that is not just philosophy that is real. That's what Einstein would say. Uh, it's I have no problem in accepting that this world is an illusion, but it is a persistent illusion. I wish uh, Einstein had more training in mysticism and consciousness and uh, living other dimensions and un understood the relationship between mind and uh, the reality we see in the physical world. But anyway, uh, I don't want to get too philosophical or too scientific. I just want to focus on how we can uh, understand this illusion that created so much fear, that fear has to be first cleared from our mind. And that is very important. And we have to become normal, really normal. And how can we become normal? Just by understanding the illusion. There is a metaphor uh, or an analogy that is given in the Indian system. During darkness, uh, you cannot differentiate between a rope and a snake. And it looks like a snake, but it is really not a snake. And what uh, dispels the fear is just bringing more light onto the object which is just the rope. As long as you are thinking it is a snake, the fear is there. You know, it is irrational, it is not real, but then that fear is real in the sense that you feel the fear. The same thing is about the coronavirus. The fear that is uh, the fear of infection, for instance. I am going to be infected. Is it a rational fear or an irrational fear? Or a scientific fear? It's no law. Yeah, uh, it's true that anybody can be infected. That is true. So, so we have to look at does it do any harm or any lasting harm or even death to people who are like relatively younger or below 60, say, or because below 65, or anyone above 65 who are very healthy? In some cases, the people who are in the 80s are more healthier than people who are in the 30s. And the people who died are people who were already sick with compromised uh, immune system uh, with diseases and they are the one who died more. Relatively speaking, the people who were affected, uh, who were not affected are the young people and healthy people are not affected. Okay. So we don't have to fear uh, about infection. Assuming that this is, uh, we are going to be infected. Okay. And there are 
two ways of understanding the infection, how the infection can happen. The infection ha can happen in two ways. You just go and expose yourself to people who are infected or asymmetric, and then you get affected. And this is a physical scientific phenomenon. So what happens? And it's not going to kill you if you are not uh, if you are not sick through other diseases, which are very serious diseases. And especially if you are young, it's not going to disease. So how long it's going to last? It's not going to last forever. It is going to go away. So why are we then having this fear? It is because it is irrational. Even if you get infected, this I was talking to a doctor, uh, and she said, "Why? I don't understand why there is such a fear from people. I am seeing about 50 people every day with coronavirus. I got infected, but then I knew that, you know, how to take care of myself. And then she's a spiritual person. And then she said, one day I slept for eight, you know, an additional eight or ten hours, and then it was gone. And then I know this is just a bad flu, that's all. And that is how she looks at it. And whenever I just raise questions about my own fears, she said, it is irrational. So what is going to happen? You're not going to die of it because you, are, you don't have any serious illnesses, uh, you know, that... So that is irrational, even when you get infected, it's not the end of the world. But then what happened, and it's just put so much irrational fear because everything was closed down, and you are not allowed to go to, uh, to stop the spread, you know, and uh, I'm not going to go into uh, inquiring whether what, the path we pursued to close down everything was the right one or wrong one. But one thing we know that we lost trillions and trillions of dollars and lost jobs, which is bad, all because of an irrational fear. Yeah, of an irrational fear. And that irrational fear has to be changed. Okay. So even if you are going to be infected, we are not going to, we should not go and close down everything. We have to understand, now we have so much understanding about uh, asymptomatic uh, people and the, who are going to be affected and what needs to be done. Okay, no, nothing can be done. Just, uh, you know, isolate yourself and then it will go away as it came in. That's one way of looking at it. And uh, the other way is testing, and that testing now is uh, is a real thing. Again, it is more, uh, this testing gives you a lot of psychological uh, assurance. Well, I am either effect, uh, infected, I am not infected, so I know how to uh, better handle it. So the benefit of testing is more uh, psychological than physical. Because, you know, there is no in uh, medicine, therapeutics, or a vaccine yet. So, so the, the bottom line is to understand the fear itself, which is an illusion, which is not true. So how are you going to, in the whole life, you just don't think that understanding fear uh, uh, is only pertained to... Uh, the coronavirus. This is the fear, uh, the, the concept of fear and understanding is very, very important to deal with life itself. That's, uh, that's very, that's why I want to take some time to, uh, to talk uh, uh, at some length of, about what fear is. It is an illusion, a collective illusion, a collective illusion, which is I want to I want to give you a very graphic example. Uh, three people, the commissioner of FDA, the CDA director, and Dr. Fauci, all these people are infected. Were there frontline people working directly with uh, COVID people? 
like the doctors and nurses, they are not. And why did they get infected? It is because, number one, they have been thinking about it all the time and they feared about it. And they were they're both. They are human beings too. They are not gods. Okay. And then uh, science comes with a certain a set arrogant, uh, uh, you know, belief system. Well, this is science. It is going to happen only this way. It is going to happen only this way, only when you think that it's going to be, happen this way. And this is not a belief system. This is quantum physics because it is you who create everything because consciousness collapses the waves into particles. That is quantum physics of the highest kind. <clears throat> now, so they were thinking, thinking, thinking in a negative way and then that they, they are going to be affected because they are scientists, they know what is going to happen and this is what is going to happen. And this is a very important thing. Whereas Donald Trump did not think, he doesn't care to wear masks. masks. He, that doesn't mean you should not do it. You know, that, you know, but he elected to do that. But he is a very, very strong man and, a, and a, you know, not, he's fearless. One thing about him, he's completely fearless and ruthless. And when you have a consciousness like this, you are not going to be defeated by the virus. Uh, somebody may say, no, no, he must have taken chloroquine or something. Yeah, so what? Even if he had done the chloroquine and then he believed in it, but others did not believe in it. So you can, you know, if you choose to do, you know, he chose to do, and then if that was the case, we do not know. And then he cured of, he got cured of this because of the chloroquine, you know, it may be possible also. But nevertheless, what is more important is the, you should not have fear. Now that most people are fearful, they don't have the money, they don't have the strength, they don't have the psychology, and every other person is talking about coronavirus and be getting infected. And this is a very bad reality. And we cannot collectively go and create coronavirus uh, and then give reality to it. And then everybody is going to be infected. So we have to just to take this idea out of it from our, from our mind. I'll tell you what happened in my life. In 1996 uh, or seven, I, something like that, I was in Italy. I used to spend a lot of time in Europe during that time teaching. I was a, a full, you know, my appearance was like, a, you know, someone who just uh, <clears throat> came out of the Himalayas uh, into, the, into Italy with a long beard and a long hair, and then an Oscar-winning director asked me if I could act in a movie that he was directing. <clears throat> I said I will look at it, uh, and if it <coughs> if it's a good theme, and I will consider. And that was the movie called uh, Nirvana. Uh, Christopher Lambe is the hero. Uh, Gabriel Silvitoros is the actual Oscar-winning director. And I, uh, I acted as a guru, with no makeup, nothing. And, uh, and the theme was, Christopher Lambe comes to me, my ashram, and then looking for his uh, girlfriend who died, came and lived in my ashram and died. And... Uh, uh, Christopher Lambe was, uh, uh, for some, uh, for some reason, uh, uh, I don't remember why, the police was searching for him. So he comes and for my help, I just want information about my girlfriend. Um, more importantly is that <clears throat> the police is after me. And I, you have to help me uh, in that respect too. I told him simply, that's very easy. If you just don't think about the police, the police will never find you. That is the theme. That's why I said, when the director told me the story, I said, I will do that. Because that I was 
I want to believe that. That is the truth. Uh, so he said, deal. I will not think about the police at all. And uh, because, as you say, I am also convinced if I think about it, it become a reality. So this is something that everybody has to learn, not to think about the coronavirus and being infected. And the example uh, I gave is President Trump and Pence on the one hand, and then on the other hand, the FDA director, the CDA director, and Dr. Fauci. Okay. Don't think about uh, at all. Distract yourself. Go and watch movies, talk to friends, or if you are spiritual like me, meditate and then read quantum physics and then, you know, do seminars. Uh, and then that will be very important because psychologically becoming strong is everything, is everything. You create your reality through your own psychology. And that's how it is. So they, you know, don't think about it in a negative way. And then if you do, then it's very likely that you are going to create that. Now, you may want to even look at, uh, uh, yesterday I was watching um, a show on the vaccine and then some placebo people are involved in the uh in the study, the, the the bad part of the placebo is that some will, someone is going to create that. It's not okay. It's okay. It's not you are going to create cancer, you know. And then that is more difficult than this bad flu. Okay. Uh, but what you think become real is true. Is true. You know, there is so many researches on uh, on how you create re even uh, uh, a physical, biological reality the, just by thinking it is real. If you think it is not real, it is not real. See, this has to be taught in schools and colleges and, and for adults so that they can create, recreate anything and everything they want. I know that the economy is now uh, has been damaged beyond imagination. Trillions of dollars have been lost. And uh, so you cannot be thinking about that. The media, you know, is doing a bad job in just, you know, focusing on only negative things. It's not going to work. We are, it's going to come back. And then uh, what the dead people are saying and how these dead people were so close to us and how they died and then what they did, what they said before when they were die, uh, when they died. You know, don't ruminate over that. Just go, forget it. Okay. Not that I'm saying that you should not think about our, uh, your dead relatives. It's good they are dead, but we are very, um, you know, uh, uh, you're sorry for that. But then you go ahead and then uh, live your life. And that is very important. And then it's, and also contribute to creating a very positive environment. See, collectively, we brought down the economy. Collectively, we got <clears throat> the virus infection. Now, collectively, what we need to do is to get rid of that. And that is very, very important. Collectively, we have to become very positive. Collectively, we have to get rid of this fear. And how do we get rid of the fear? It's very simple. I gave the example of the rope and the snake. And it's, you know, the rope appears as a snake in the absence of light. When you bring in the light, then the rope disappears. The snake disappears and the rope appears. The same thing, the same model. The coronavirus will be real and affecting you and you will be afraid to go to the beach, you will be afraid to go to the <clears throat> movies, you will be afraid to go to anywhere, you're afraid to go to a job and then because you have been used to staying at home for two months. And it's the great thing that has happened is it, it is getting open now and then if we have not opened it, then people will get 
you know, more entrenched, deeply entrenched into the fear complex, which is the worst thing that can happen to us. And it happened to us personally, collectively, and at the government level. So that should not happen. So this is, you don't have to go to meditate on anything, just the very idea that we created, we created it through the fear. And then if we get rid of the fear, we are going to get rid of uh, the virus. So all of us have to collectively engage in positive thinking and denying that uh, a virus. And it is not philosophy, it is science, it is quantum physics. That, that is the truth. You know, uh, if I had the power, if I were the president of the United States, I would do all that is possible in my capacity to make people to collectively commit to the thinking that we are great people and we both had built a fantastic, <clears throat> tremendous economy in the world. And, uh, and it was a bad dream, a bad fear. And this fear had caused us so much damage. And then we are not going to <clears throat> stay in that mindset. We are going to have the opposite mindset. And what is the opposite mindset? That we are going to be fantastic. We are going to, uh, you know, and how are we going to create it? By just thinking about it in a positive, outrageous way. Positive and outrageous way. It is going to be coming back again as it uh, went down uh, to kill us and also damage our economy. That's why the magic is like the phoenix rising from its own ashes. It comes back again. So that is what, now, what is the methodology here that we are going to use? Just replace fear with courage, with positive thinking. Be brave. And then you need uh, an understanding to be brave. And that understanding comes through uh, cultivating this belief system that we create our reality and we created a bad reality out of a fee baseless fear. Uh, and then now we are going to create, get rid of the fear and then replace the fear with positive ideas. Now, <clears throat> uh, some people are more, uh, you know, science oriented, I will believe what all you say only when I get tested. I, I agree because uh, testing is important. So get tested one way or the other. They may say you are positive and then that's a better way to handle it. They may, they may say it's negative. You know, you can handle it that too. So you can test it. But though not many people require that. Many people by nature are uh, do not care because they don't, you know, how many people go to the doctors, you know, they don't want to go to the doctor, you know. Uh, and those are the people who are more uh, into their own inner strength. And those people who said that I would believe only when I see through my eyes and when doctors testify that I have no coronavirus. That's, and those people should go. So this is uh, on... Uh, uh, the conceptual theoretical side of uh, of rising from our fears and creating a personally uh, great economy and also collectively and also extending to, uh, to the national level and the global level. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to do more. Uh, I want to give, I want to teach a seminar a whole seminar that will be on Instagram too, on how to rebuild the world, you know. Uh, and that is going beyond changing your belief system. Changing your belief system is okay. Then even if you don't believe in it, things can be changed through the power of mantras. The mantra is a great technology. It's a great technology. 
and that can prove a lot. It has been proved a lot already. As early as the 1980s, my formal, first formal guru, the Maharishi, proved in Washington, D.C., that the, through the power of the mantras, meditation, that he can bring down the crime in Washington, D.C. And this research was done jointly with uh, his organization, the police department, and uh, and uh, the scientists. What did they prove? 25% of the people, uh, the crime rate came down just because people were meditating. Why can't we do this now? The only thing is uh, the organization claimed it is only their uh, meditation did it. No, I, I, I wouldn't uh, buy into that. A very positive belief system can change it. Whether it is faith in Christ or faith in Buddha or faith in Shiva or Vishnu, and that is secondary. Okay, it is more scientific to say that that you, through your own faith, can change things. So have a faith not in coronavirus coming back, but in defeating it. So I'm going to use these uh, sounds that I will teach for free and uh, in a seminar on the 31st. So there will be more information that is available. This is my first Instagram and I like this at all, you know, because it's so it's just on my cell phone and uh, so I can do it myself. I don't need anybody to set up the camera and no camera is needed, no light is needed and, and I'm just sitting on my desk and I'm able to do this. So. I'm very happy that uh, I'm, I'm able to, to talk to you through this Instagram program. God bless.